Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Passive Money Plan. Kirby, Alex over there, got my directions right. Uh, today, we're going to talk about the three things or three key aspects in our life that got us from where we started at to the point we at today. And we're just going to ping, Alex, me and you just going to ping pong back and forth. Uh, I ask you one, you'll give your number one on the list, and I'll give my number one on the list. And then we'll just go about that. And hopefully, it gives some insight to people. Maybe they at a certain point and they're looking for that extra little oomph to maybe if they see something through our you know path as we've been going that might be the thing to unlock their unlock that key to what's holding them or limited to them and where they're trying to be in life so with all that being said let's get started alec what you got first one the first one i have is live on less than i make that uh was probably the first one i really did to start from where I was to get where I am. And I still do it today. Um, and that's a lot of things. That's living on less than I make to the point where I'm not going into, you know, say consumer debt where we're living off of debt. Um, or um, making the necessary sacrifices to not, uh, you know, spend on certain luxuries that may not be necessary in the moment um just giving that up deciding to give that up so that i can uh, continue to save and invest and move my money forward rather than just waste it because leisure um although you know i think we've talked about maybe setting aside a budget for leisure but leisure is just you're just losing your money um not saying that you can't have leisure or have fun or go out to eat or whatever but uh, be responsible with it and not blow all of it. Um, some people, that's probably their biggest bill um, every day or, you know, every month. <laughs> but if you can afford it like Kirby, then it's okay. But uh, yeah, that's many, people, biggest bill. many people earn a regular wage and they, you know, their biggest expense is leisure. And I, maybe I'm strict on how I view leisure, but I think leisure is from going to McDonald's to buying yourself something at the store. I mean, it's, it's anything that is not necessary for you to survive. <laughs> so, yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, I've cut out a lot of that in my life, uh, but I still, I still do enjoy life. So I'm not a total hermit, but, uh, but yeah, living on less than I make. And we've talked about that many times. <laughs> So, yeah, he, he, he closer. He closer to being a hermit. <laughs> All right. So, Kirby, what's your number one? Yeah, I mean that was that was a good number one for me. It was it was looking. You brought it up consumer debt, but looking at consumer debt and wanting to eliminate consumer debt with the purpose. What I mean, consumer debt, I hate it. I mean, I hate it with a passion. I mean, I know people that pay, you know, minimum on credit cards. and No, I hate it with a passion. I hated debt so much that I literally volunteered. I was out of the military. I volunteered to, and mind you, I was I didn't have a job, but I had a lot of debt. So I volunteered and I did the math. You know, I knew what my rank was, uh, you know, how much, you know, how much money that I could possibly bring in to liquidate the debt. But I volunteered to deploy to Iraq in a combat zone just so I could use every single dollar that I made to pay off my consumer debt. That meant my car, that meant credit cards, that meant any other store cards that I had, uh, anything that I had, like an appliance, rent to own, all that. I wanted to pay it completely off. But that's how much I hated debt that I would really I was willing to risk my life to get rid of it. And that's exactly what I did. I I volunteer with uh, a military company with the National Guard out of Texas, and we went to uh, Missoula, Iraq. We was there for a year. So I decided to make that sacrifice to get out of debt because that was the thing that was holding me up back. Most of my income, especially during those times when I had the little job paying $9 an hour, I didn't even have enough money for gas for work, let alone to pay off the debt. So once it just got too much to bear, I just said, I got to tackle this head on, be intention on purpose and get it done. And that's what I decided to do. And if people focused on getting rid of their consumer debt, they would have a lot more capital to do everything else with. All right, Alex, so what you got for number two? 
Number two is listen to others who know more than me. And so, I mean, this goes from listening to you, listening to, uh, I've mentioned him, a guy that I uh, work with who used to be my manager. Um, listening to another guy we I've mentioned on the podcast, uh, a guy named Doug that uh, got me into selling antiques. Um, you know, just always listening to those that were on the path I wanted to be on. So um, I think the best way to, I think the easiest way to get information about what you want to do is just listen to people that live it and have been through it. And like I've said before um, on this podcast, you can do it the difficult way, like you did read books while you're in Afghanistan. I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> you know, that, you know, <laughs> it can be done people, but holy crap. Like, I don't know <laughs> that, you know, it took, takes a lot of uh, courage, you know, <laughs> a, a, a lot of hitting your head against the wall. <laughs> but um, I mean, you can do it that way. Honestly, you can read the books and as tedious as reading books may be, uh, but it can be done that way where you take days and months to learn something or just, and I see this so much and it frustrates me, but people that want to learn that just can't shut up. And that's why I mentioned in the other video, like just shut up and listen to the people that know more than you. Like, like just control yourself. Just, I mean, the first time we talked, I'm pretty sure like the whole time I was probably like 90% of the time I was probably just quiet, just listening to you. Cause yeah, I'm like, I was like, is he even listening? <laughs> yeah, but it's yeah. just consuming the information, just like, you know, and being very careful with how you say things. You don't want to mess up an opportunity. Um, like, um, I've seen too many people where they have someone trying to teach them something and then they just make a ignorant remark or question. And, you know, there, there's good questions to ask, but some questions are just like, you can tell they're being ignorant or arrogant about it. And, if you're trying to learn, then just, you know, be humble and just try to learn from that person. So that would be my number two. Yeah, I like that one. I, and I'm changing mine up now. I got the right channel. But uh, I'm going to piggyback off of what you said. So I'm just going to I'm just gonna knock my number three out and then slide one in. Uh, my number two, my number two now is questioning information received. Uh, so um, like you said, you know, learn from people that know more than you are, if that. If they're on a path that you're trying to be on, then you need to learn from them. And and why, what I mean by question information received is it's a lot of frauds out there. It's a lot of people that talk good. I mean, we talked about it on here. It's a lot of people who can YouTube good way better than us. They got the camera angles. They got the studio. They got all that other crap. But make sure that the person, what I mean, make sure not just because he said it, Oh, I got a million dollars in real estate. Just because he said it, that don't mean nothing. Make sure that the person that you're following or the person you're getting advice from is actually doing what he's saying. Every day, putting in the work. If this is somebody like, oh, you got a friend of a cousin or somebody that know this and they're not putting in the work, you need to ask them questions to know if they're really doing it. Because I've seen it a lot. I mean, it's embarrassing how much I've seen it where I hear somebody say, hey, I got this information from this person. This is how it go. And then come to find out the person that got the information from didn't know anything about the topic and they were just talking out. They were just talking out their ass. I mean, I see it a lot. And then, they, you know, people come and say, oh, I lost this amount of money talk, doing this or I lost this amount of money because I, I would listen to some people on social media and they said invest here and do this. And I always say, you cannot expect, nobody cares about your money more than you. You cannot expect somebody to know more than you. If you're learning from somebody, they shouldn't be giving you answers to the test. What they should be is teaching you how to find the answers to the test. Like the old adage go, if I give you a fish, you eat for a day. But if I teach you a fish, you can eat forever. It's the same thing with investments and stuff like that. If somebody just tell me, hey, yeah, go buy uh, Apple at, at 132, you good to go. How do you know at 132 is the pro the process? You should be, you know, they should be teaching you more as a teacher than just giving you the answer to the test. Oh, do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. And then 
you don't have no clue of how the hell they came up with it. And then when you go to fly on your own, you fall on your face because you don't know what the hell, how the hell he even got to those answers. So those, that's why question information received and, you know, paying attention to the person you listen to, making sure that they know what they're doing and they have a heart of a teacher and not just somebody that just trying to give you answers to the test. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, Cause especially like when I was learning from you in the beginning, like, um, the majority of the information I would say for a whole year was how to value a stock, looking at the book value. Uh, what does EPS mean? What does what is the PE ratio? Uh, how to compare a PE ratio? What do bank stocks trade at compared to tech stocks? You know, actually learning about the stock market. Um, and I think the whole time I was like, all right, so what do I invest in? <laughs> but, you know, the, like eventually sure. then... <laughs> Once you start doing the homework and stuff, then you can start like thinking for yourself and seeing like, OK, this is a good company. And then now you know what to look into the company to actually see if it is a good investment. Um, but, yeah, questioning information received. Very important. Um, I should have hinted on that because um, I think if someone. So like I think it's if you put two people in a room, one is a fraud and one is actually about it. Um, I think you can tell which is which. Um, but yeah, there are a lot of people that are fraud, but um, for those that actually what they, the advice that they're giving you, they're actually doing it. I think it's easy to tell uh, with just how they live their life, how, what the, the knowledge that they know. And if it just makes common sense, um, I think is also, you know, if it, if it, if what they're teaching just makes sense, if it's, you know, you're not just questioning it, like, well, that doesn't, you know, you're kind of skeptical then. Somebody who's actually doing it, they can break it down to a term that anybody can relate to. Right. Somebody that, somebody that don't know what the hell they're doing, they just saying big words and saying fancy stuff to confuse you, to make you think you know what they're talking about. But if somebody's actually doing it, like, selling options and stuff like that if if you're doing it you can break it down to it to make sense to somebody right. that I never mean, sold an option or like, anything like, like that the, the guy at work for instance um who and like i said i've mentioned him on the podcast before he wasn't living some extravagant life i don't even think the guy is a millionaire honestly but he all he was saying was i have three years left in my house we pay extra on our house uh, we invest in our 401k, we save every month. So it was just like, it was just basic stuff. Like, okay, even the majority of people don't do that. So if that's just the first little step to being away from the majority of the crowd and having at least a better financial life, then, okay, maybe let me walk over here and see what this is, you know? So Absolutely. All right. What's number three? Number three is, uh, don't give up or never give up. I think um, that one is very important. And um, I don't even consider myself an entrepreneur, but I know a true entrepreneur doesn't give up and um, always has a mentality to keep trying new things. If it doesn't work, you know, like you say, there's, there's wins and lessons. There's not wins and losses. So um, keeping at it. And it can be hard. I'm not saying, I mean, I've totally felt like giving up, but you know, if you don't give up, then yeah. you'll never allow yourself to give up. And I think that's, that's important. Yeah. And, and I'm, and this, this video is for men and women, but the thing is, is, and I'm thinking, I, and I mean, I know it's different kind of households out there, you know, households is woman led single mom houses. I'm talking to the leaders of the house. So I'm not just saying, oh, this is for men only. I'm talking about for the leaders of the house. You can't give up because you have people depending on you. Forget if it was just you, if it was just you and nobody, but most people have, you know, they have siblings, they have brothers, they have, you know, mothers that might need help. They have children. So when you're giving up, you've got too many people depending on you. And I heard, um, I heard a, a gentleman say this years ago, and uh, he was asking his father. He was asking his father. His father was sick in the hospital, and the and then the people in the hospital told him, 
hey, you need to relax for a week or so. And then he asked the doctor, said, can I walk? The doctor said, yeah. And he said, well, I'm going to work. And then the son asked the father, the doctor said, he said, the doctor said you need to take a rest. Why are you going out there to work? And he said, I got too many people depending on me to sit right here. That's what it is. You have too many people depending on you to quit. I mean, yeah, it sucks. I mean, the ups and downs, like you spoke about, the ups, the ups are great. You think you're taking over the world when you go up. But then it come down, it's like, oh, God, I can't do this. But remember, if somebody's depending on you, that's why you can't quit. If you want to quit on yourself, that's fine. But don't quit on the other people that's around you. So, yeah, yeah, I like it. But uh, so my number three, so we can wrap this up. My number three is just like my number one. Just like be focused, intentional, and want to hurry up and get out of debt. The same thing with investing. And again, I don't care what you invest in. Besides, if you just saying I'm about to go cryptocurrency, go crazy and say <laughs> YOLO, then I got a problem with that. But the other avenue, you know, stock market index funds, real estate, businesses, you know, stuff like that. Be intentional on purpose. Do the work every day. If you say, oh, I want rental properties. And then I say, OK, how many rental properties you looked at in a week? You say, oh, I looked at two or three then you're not being intentional on purpose. Me, I have enough rental properties to just say, stop, I'm done. But every day, not missing a day, every day, two or three times a day, but I'm not saying y'all be crazy like me, but every day I look at look for potential deals. If I'm buying one or not, because even though I'm looking at the deal, I'm seeing where the market's going. So in my pockets where I buy real estate, I'm looking at the areas and seeing if it's a deal available, you know, knowing what a good deal, a great deal is, but I'm always looking. And then when I find one that shows up, like the one I just found uh, New Year's Eve, I go splash on it, but I'm looking every day. I mean, you're going to ask my wife or whatever. I wake up at, so I, I look at it before I go to bed. Then I wake up at three o'clock in the morning again and scroll through the areas that I look to buy real estate. Every day, Christmas, Hanukkah, birthdays, every day. And that's what that's what you do. Be intentional on purpose and know what you're doing, know what you're investing in. And I believe that is, you know, a huge one that got me to success was being more intentional on purpose every day. Just like, you know, me with the stock market. I used to text you two or three in the morning. Like, you see this? I ain't been sleeping. <laughs> I mean, I ain't even sleep yet because that's just how I am. I'm intentional on purpose because the thing is, is I don't want an opportunity to come and say I failed because of me. And I don't and I'm not blaming nobody else. I got to look myself in the mirror. So I'm going to be intentional on purpose doing it. And then that's how you succeed. And all the successful people you meet or you know about, they are intentional. Like Elon Musk sleeping in his office for months and, and years on end with Tesla. Intentional purpose. He didn't want to waste the time to get in the car, drive home, and go to sleep. So he just put set up a cot in his office and slept in his office so he could just wake back up and go to go to work to get the get the cut uh get the business up. And people don't know Tesla was days away from going bankrupt. But because Elon Musk was intentional on purpose every day, that's how he got to the winning side. Not because, oh, I'm Elon Musk, I'm smart, somebody gonna figure it out for me. Not, oh, I want to get into real estate, but uh, I'll look at Zillow today, but then I'll check again in a couple months. No, that's not how it works. Intentional on purpose, no matter for stocks, real estate, business, whatever. Even if it's just saving, intentional on purpose. When you setting up your budget, if you're just saving money, if you, if you get paid on Friday, the first line item should be the money you're saving. So soon as your paycheck come in, before you go swipe the card at Starbucks, Wendy's, or wherever, the money that you have set aside for saving should be account transfer, go to that account. Attention on purpose all the time. And I believe that will lead to success. And those are the things that I did to get to where I'm at. Yeah, and I think like back to your second point or back to my second point that you were talking on, uh, this can go with uh, what you're saying right now is um, not even give up on yourself. I know you said like, if you want to give up on yourself, you know, go ahead. But I think if you don't give up on yourself, like you're, like you're talking, be intentional. 
then you won't even give up on the people that depend on you. I think that is a important mm -hmm. stance to take is just, you know, not giving up on yourself because if you do, I think you'll just get in the habit of just being lazy and like you're talking about people that don't want to be intentional. We see, we see those people every day. So, yeah. Yep. Yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you. But uh, with all that being said, guys, if you like the video, hit the like button, subscribe, share, and we'll see you guys in the uh, next video.